Hi, welcome to 90% Knitting. This is episode 284 and I am Lisa, also known as FiberNymph. Um, I will put my screen in here, my contact screen, so you can find all the places that you can find me on social media and contact info. Okay, um, how are you? Today is Friday. It is June 22nd. Happy summer if you are in the northern hemisphere. Happy winter if you are in the southern hemisphere. Yesterday was the solstice, so we are officially into the new season, even though I've been considering it summer since the beginning of June. But the solstice has happened now. <laughs> Um, let's see, I was not, I was gone over the weekend, last weekend I was at TNNA, which um, stands for the National Needle Arts Association, so that was very cool, it was the second year I'd gone to that, and I really enjoyed it a lot more this year, I mean I enjoyed it last year, but I enjoyed it even more this year, I think because I knew what to expect, I took a bunch of classes, I took four different classes, all of them had to do with, um, social media in one way or another and you know how to use social media in your business to help promote and get people to know what you have and stay in touch with your customers it was incredibly informative and i was overwhelmed by the end because there was so much information um, even beyond just like the main social media channels that most people know about it's like there's all these other tools and apps and ways to do things it was like <gasps> So that was good. Uh, it was fun seeing all the new stuff. I do have some things that I'm hoping to take advantage of with other companies. Not take advantage of, but you know, make use of, work with other companies to bring things to you guys, to my customers. So hopefully that will start to manifest within the next, you know, few months. Um, what else? Saw a lot of people that I knew and that was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it was all very good until we woke up Saturday morning to get ready to come home and I woke up with a horrible case of vertigo. I've only ever had vertigo one other time in my life and it was about three years ago and I had also woken up with it that day. Um, that time, you might remember because that was just a few years ago, I ended up in the hospital. Um, my son took me to the ER, they kept me overnight for observation and did all kinds of tests. They never found anything wrong with me um, to explain the vertigo they just said oh, it's probably some sort of inner ear disturbance if it still continues to bother you go see a specialist or something but it went away like within a day it went away so I never followed up on it other than I had to have another MRI two years later because in the course of them trying to figure out why I had vertigo they did an MRI and the neurologist when he came in to talk to me about it he's like oh well we don't see anything that's causing your vertigo but oh by the way you do have a small brain tumor and I'm like wait a minute <laughs> Brain tumor should not start with, oh, by the way. That's like a thing, right? He's like, oh, it's really nothing. It's just a small meningioma. They're really common, especially in women of your age because of, you know, it can be hormone related. I'm like, oh, great, with the hormones again. So he just said, you know, get it rechecked in a couple years to make sure it hasn't changed. And so I did. I got it rechecked last year. It hadn't changed. So it's just sitting up there. At one point I named it. I don't remember what I named it though. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Um, I still have the vertigo. Um, it's not as bad as it was Saturday. When I first had it, I was also very light sensitive and sound sensitive, which I still am a little bit, not a much. Um, so I kind of thought, well, maybe I was having a silent migraine because I have had those before. Um, they usually do not manifest themselves with dizziness though, the vertigo. That was new. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I did go to MedExpress on Monday though and um, because I was, my ears felt full and I thought, well, maybe I have an ear infection or something. And lo and behold, apparently I do have a type of ear infection. It's not like the raging, horrible one that makes kids cry. It's <laughs> one where there's just a lot of fluid in your ears. Um, and he gave me an antibiotic, which I don't even know that that's helpful for this particular type of ear infection, but whatever. He gave me an antibiotic and nasal spray to try to open my sinuses so things could drain. But that's the thing, I haven't felt sick, like I haven't been sick, I haven't had a cold, I haven't had any respiratory anything, I get allergies at this time of year, sometimes, like mildly, but other than that, I've been fine. So yeah, taking an antibiotic, taking these nasal spray things every day, I've been taking a decongestant, trying to like loosen anything up and get it to drain, and taking like a leave every once in a while if I start to really feel... That's the thing. I don't even have a headache. Like, I have feel pressure, but 
I still have the vertigo a little bit. And it's mainly when I move my head too fast. Like I can, I can look sideways and I can bend over forward and I'm fine. But if I look up at the ceiling, like actually like that for, oh, <laughs> like even just doing that did it. Um, like three seconds max, up the room will start to spin. Or if I lay down at night to go to bed immediately, whoo, it's, it's the most disconcerting feeling ever. If you've ever had vertigo, you know what I mean. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's just hormonal, you know, because I keep Googling all this stuff, right? That's what you do. <laughs> and like some websites are like, yes, perimenopausal women can have these symptoms. It's like, fabulous, let's blame the hormones for something else. Or it can be related to Meniere's disease or something, which I don't have all those symptoms. So I don't think that's what it is. Or it can be, you know, crystals in your ears that can cause it. And then there's all these like different manipulations you can do like a half somersault and turn your head and get, and I've been doing these trying to see if that helps and it hasn't. So anyway, all that to say is I'm not, feeling completely perfect right now. I'm a little, just, I won't even say I feel spacey. I don't feel spacey. I just feel weird. My head feels weird. I don't know. It's, uh, take that as a warning. I don't know. <laughs> if you are a medical professional, give me your opinion. You know, there's nothing like crowdsourcing your medical care, right? <laughs> I am going to follow up with my doctor if it doesn't go away by next week though. I figure giving the antibiotics a chance, fine, but I will go see my doctor. Although that's the other thing, my doctor, I see a nurse practitioner usually. She's left the practice that she's been at for years and she's gonna be at another practice, but not for, she's got like a gap, like almost a three, I think a three week gap in between where she's at. So I can't even see her. I'd have to go see somebody else that I don't know. And that's not fun either, so anyway that's my life and that's this been this week and I've kind of just been taking it easy this week for the reason that I just I, I felt haven't felt quite right you know I'm not sick but I just don't feel perfect I don't know it's weird I have been doing some knitting though although that's the other thing even on the ride home like Sarah did drive us home like I said I couldn't knit like there was just no way because I was even like nauseated at that point it's like oh this is horrible it does not bother me to drive at this point. That I know probably sounds scary, but no, I'm fine when I'm driving. Like I can focus and I'm not dizzy. But last night, Bill and I went out to dinner and he drove and I was in the passenger seat and I was dizzy the entire time. And I've never had motion sickness either, ever in my life. So I don't know, I'm sure it's all somehow related. The whole inner ear thing is just like this weird vortex of strange balance issues sometimes. I don't know. All right, hey, let's get on with the knitting, shall we? Because we're eight minutes in. I have started this like four or five times now because I keep talking about all this weird dizziness stuff. Like, I, I know you guys probably don't really care. You can jump ahead. There's the timestamp menu. <laughs> Feel free. But that's been my week, so. All right, and my show notes are down here today, so I'm looking down here. I have some FOs. Woohoo! Um, I finished this hat that has been on the needles for a while. I'm not even sure that you've seen it before. It's just a leftovers hat. Um, I totally just made up the color work on the fly as I was doing it. I started it a while ago, and then when I picked it back up to finish it, um, I must have switched which yarn I was holding as my dominant yarn because the green is not as prominent in the second half of the hat as it is in the first half. Plus, I think my stitches were a little too tight. So when I blocked it, like the green stitches pulled, like pulled, not pulled, like pulling. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's not perfect, but I think it's cute. And you know, it's a charity hat. And I did make a pom-pom too. I have not put the pom-pom on yet, but I will tie the pom-pom on and Whoever gets it can keep it on or take it out. It doesn't matter. I actually made a bonus pom-pom too. Because remember I said I was going to do that when I had leftover yarn. So I have a bonus pom-pom. But anyway, this was just my... Um, this is my yarn. Fiber Nymph Dye Works. This is my... Bonafide base. <laughs> I had to think if it was Bonafide or Cozy. No, this is the DK weight. This is Bonafide. 
um, in the bright green and um, taupe colorways. So there we go. And that is one FO. My other FO is actually not a knitting project, but it's a weaving project. I finished my scarf. I just finished it this morning, actually, because when I showed it to you the last time, it was really almost finished. I just haven't had a chance to sit at the loom. And so I got the loom out this morning and I literally had like maybe one more inch to weave before I could cut it off the loom. But here it is. I can't even show you the whole thing because it's super long, but ah, I love it. I am so, so happy with how this turned out. The, the fringe looks a little funky right now because like this was, this was the part that was tied to the stick. <laughs> I don't I have to learn the terminology the loom stick that you turn to roll your fabric up um, it was tied really weird they the directions they gave me for how to tie that were not clear and I could not for the life of me figure out the knot they wanted me to make so I just kind of tied them into bows because you have to be able to untie them and so it did make lumps sort of in my my fabric as I was winding it on to that front roller thingy. Um, so you can kind of see that this fabric is a little bumpy and wobbly here just from the first couple of rolls, but then it was fine. And I think once it's, you know, I have to soak it yet. I haven't blocked it. Um, once it's soaked, that'll all even out. I'm really happy with this. Um, I used the Rowan Damask yarn that I've had in my stash forever and ever. I did make a project page for this on Rav, so the colorway numbers are in there. I honestly don't even know if Damask is still being produced or if it's a discontinued yarn, but I have a lot of it, so there will probably be more Damask scarves coming. Um, I, I do have some ends that, I mean, they're, they're woven in, literally woven in, but I will trim them after I rinse this, so that's why they're still sticking out on the back. Um, yeah, it's it turned out wonderfully because if you remember, I did have a loom a long time ago. I used it once, hated it, and sold it, and I never wove again. <laughs> and um, that scarf that I made that first time, I did not understand the concept of you, you know, whatever you warp, the length that you warp on your loom, you're not going to get that exact length. That's not going to be your finished length. So my, sh my scarf then ended up quite short. I actually was going to bring it in with me because I found it and I, I forgot it. Sorry, I'll show you some other time. But it turned out quite short and it also turned out quite narrow because that was the other thing I didn't know that even if you, if your warp is technically like 10 inches wide, you're not going to get 10 inches of width. It pulls in. And so this is a, just under 9 inches. So it's because I have a 10 inch loom right now. So the, the warps are 10 inches. Um, the warps, the, the warp, I'm sorry. I don't, again, terminology, I don't quite know it all yet. But anyway. It's a little under nine inches, but I think it's a perfect width. I love this width for um, what I'm for a scarf. And I, I just cut it off and I tied it. Um, I am going to figure out how to do some other ways of finishing woven stuff. Um, I have to shout out a big thank you to Benita Story, who is um, from the Fiber Pusher podcast. She is so knowledgeable about a million things fiber related and a lot of times when I talk about something on the podcast, she'll email me later and be like, oh, you were talking about this and here's some resources or this is what you need to do or blah, blah, blah. She knows everything, seriously. <laughs> She's amazing. Anyway, she sent me um, a recommendation of a book that she has and she said it has a lot of good you know, information about weaving and tying things off. And I don't remember the name of the book, but I did find a copy um, that should be coming in the mail any day now. I couldn't order it through Amazon. I could have ordered it through Amazon, but I found a, there's mostly used copies because I don't think it's being, it's out of print. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I have a copy coming from the Yarn Barn in Kansas, if you know that. <laughs> so I actually think I've ordered from them before. I've ordered something there. Anyway, so I do have that book coming at Benita's recommendation, and so hopefully I will find some new and innovative ways to finish off my future weaving projects, but for now, I'm happy with this. It's lovely and weighty. I mean, this was, um, oh, this has linen in it, this yarn. You know what? I didn't write down 
and I don't have any of the ball bands, but let me see if I can find my, um, my project page real quick here, just so I can tell you what's in the yarn, because I love this yarn. And like I said, it's been in my stash for years, and um, I just, I never knit with it. Okay, so it's 57% rayon, 22% linen, and 21% acrylic. And it's a DK weight yarn, um, but it, it's lovely. It, I love how it turned out. So, and it's seven, it's about seven feet long. Yeah, it's the woven section, like not including the fringe, turned out to be 68 inches. With the fringe, it's 68 plus 14, whatever it is. Don't make me do math. 68, 70. 82? Is that 82? I don't know. Um, so that's how long it is. My warp was somewhere between 7 and 8 feet long. I did not measure it beforehand. So um, that's a great length for this. No, wait. This is 64 inches because it's actually my height. I'm 64 inches. So it's 64 inches plus 7 inches of fringe on either side. So whatever that is. But that's still, it's a perfect length scarf. And I love it, and I've said that 15 times, so I'm going to stop talking about it, but um, I'm really happy with this, and I cannot wait to warp my loom, and loom, <laughs> warp my loom again and do something else. I'm so glad I'm having a better experience with all of the weaving stuff this time around. And no, I have no desire to have a floor loom someday. Absolutely none, because I don't have anywhere to put it for one thing. And secondly, no, that's too big and overwhelming. I really like this little 10-inch loom. This this is an Ashford sample it loom that I have. They also come in 16-inch widths, but honestly, I think that might even be too wide. I like how portable and small this one is. This is perfect for me, at least right now. Okay, so that is my other FO, and so then let's move on. I have to get my show notes back here. Um, to projects and actually all three of the projects I'm going to show you are things that I cast on since the last time we talked. Um, I did mention last time that I was going to cast on my daughter's birthday socks and so I did I took those to TNNA and worked on them a ton. That's the great thing about TNNA like when you're in your classes everybody's sitting there knitting basically. <laughs> so here we are I'm a little farther on the purple, this one, than this one, obviously, but not by much. I'm almost caught up. I'm, I'm working on them concurrently um, just so that I can keep them going. I, I, I feel like things knit up faster whenever I do them that way. I don't know why, but it just feels that way. Um, yeah, so this is one of my inversible sets on my Bedazzled base, so that's the sparkly base. Um, this was Aqua Shock and Magenta, so... Those are coming along, and yeah, I'll have them done in plenty of time for her birthday because that's not until August. So I just, I did a two by two rib. Um, no, no, I didn't. I'm sorry, I did a three by one rib. Boy, I, I keep getting my ribs confused. Did I? Yes, I did the same thing on both socks. Um, yeah, so three by one rib down the cuff, um, and then just switched to stockinette for the sole and I'm still doing the three by one rib on the top of the foot. So anyway, that is that. That's moving along well. And again, that was pretty much all I knit on during the classes at TNNA because it was easy and I didn't have to think. Um, the other thing I've been working on a lot, like a lot, is what I am making out of my hand spun that I did from the holiday countdown minis, remember, from last year. So I had, I don't think I showed it on the podcast last because I don't know that I wound it up yet, but I did post a picture on Instagram after I wound it, and the cake was huge. <laughs> and my original plan for that yarn was to make the Canyon Lands shawl, which I do not remember the designer, but um, Amy Beth from the Fat Squirrel podcast, she recently made one and she made it from hand spun and it was gorgeous and I thought it looked really pretty and um, I thought, well, maybe that would be a really good project for this yarn because it's a yarn, it's a uh, pattern that was supposed to work well with um, yarn with long color stretches. Well, I cast it on... I guess the first night we were at TNA, I did that at the hotel in the evening. 
I cast it on and then I worked on it that night and I worked on it a little bit the second night. So that would have been Thursday night, I guess. No, is that right? Cast it on Wednesday night. Worked on it a little bit Thursday or Friday, one or the other. And I got to a point where I was like, you know what? I don't like it. I think I liked Amy Beth's because she was using two different hand spuns and she was alternating them every couple rows. So it was a nicer effect. I was just getting big chunks of color. And the other issue is that my hand spun, it was not particularly even. Some of it was thinner, some of it was thicker, and that was really making the edge look funky on this. So I tore it out and started looking for another project to do. And I finally fa found one that I thought would work really well, and it's called the Around the Bend Shawl, which I have been sending pictures to Instagram of that as well. Um, Here's what it looks like. It's a really interesting construction. It's a, you know, a chevron and then you bind off part of it after you get through most of your yarn and then you just work on one half to make this really, it's an asymmetrical elongated triangle. And I love that shape of shawl. So I am, I'm not using two different balls. I'm using the same ball, but I, I split it in half essentially. Um, and so I'm, you know, alternating the yarn every other row, which is what the pattern calls for you to do. And again, this is so huge right now. I can't show it to you all in one shot, but I love it. So here it is. <laughs> I'll show it to you in segments. Let's see. All right. Tangled in the yarn. So here's where it started. And I like how the, the colors really matched up well there at the beginning. That was sort of fun. And then we got into this. And then into this. I just, I love all these different color segments. They're just so cool. And now I'm here. So, yeah, I can't really, you know. So that's the center. It's just such an interesting detail with these these big holes right down the middle, which I, I would tell you how they're made, but I'm not going to because it's a paid pattern and it's sort of like the main element to the pattern. So I really don't want to give away anything on that, but I love it. And it is pretty much the only thing I have been knitting this week since I've been home. Um, I just, I just want to work on it because I want it to get done and I want to see it finished. Um, you use basically, you use your yarn to you use about 80% of your yarn and then that's when you do that bind off and finish it. So I am about, I don't know, I would say I'm about 60% done. So I don't have too much further to go before I can bind it off. At least I don't think I do. Anyway. It's a fun pattern. I really recommend it. It's a four row repeat, really memorizable. I was having issues with where you have to do that little bit in the middle to make the chevron shape. I had been counting, um, but I've finally gotten to a point where I can figure out just by looking at it which stitch I need to do something special in, so it's not a problem. I can just do it, and it's, it's I would say it's almost mindless. <laughs> is what I would say. Anyway, the pattern is by Nim Teasdale. I don't think I said that. And it's called Around the Bend. So, very fun pattern. Really glad I'm doing it with this fiber. I, this, this yarn is the perfect, this is the perfect pattern for this yarn. Let me put it that way. Okay. Um, the only other project I have to show you is really actually not a project right at this moment. It was, and then I ripped it out. Um, but it will be a project again. I was going to a movie on Wednesday with my son, and I always take something to knit when I go to the movies, and so I had some other errands to run before I was meeting him, but I knew I was going to have a space of time where I just had to hang out until I met him, so I took yarn to make a hat, like another charity hat, some leftover yarn, threw it in project bag, and figured while I have that time in the car, I can cast it on and then I'll be set to go for the movie. So I was sitting in the car during my downtime and I pulled the yarn out and looked in the bag and I didn't have any needles. 
I had gotten them out and I knew exactly where they were. They were sitting on my desk because rather than getting them out and putting them directly in the bag, I got distracted and had to sit down at my desk and um, do something on my computer and I didn't pick them back up and they never made it into the bag. So I did post on Instagram about this because this was like a crisis for me. It's like, oh my gosh, I have to go to a movie and I cannot knit on anything because I also had that shawl with me, um, but I was not planning to knit that in the movie. I couldn't have done that in the dark. Um, but that being said, that the needles in that shawl were the only needles I had with me. So I'm sitting in the car thinking, okay, I do not have enough time to even run to like Joann's or Pat Catan's and pick up a cheap pair of needles. Um, I, what am I going to do? And so I thought, well, I could take the needles out of my shawl and use them to knit something with this yarn. Now those are US 9 needles, which is way too big for my worsted weight yarn, which is what this is. Um, this is my cozy base, so it's a worsted weight. Um, and here's the other color I was going to use. But I thought, you know, knitting on something, even if it's something I end up ripping out, would be better than not knitting at all with the movie. So that's what I did. I did have some chibi needles in my bag because I had my Notions pouch in there from when I was away last weekend. So, um, and again, I was doing an Instagram story when I was co contemplating all this. And during that, I actually <laughs> accidentally dumped all of my chibi needles except one that I was holding down in my car between my seat and the console. It was priceless because I was just like, I cannot believe this is such a hot mess. <laughs> I did manage to get most of them back out later, but there's still a couple down there that I think my car has just permanently eaten. Anyway, um, so I got the, I threaded some waste yarn through the shawl, took the needles out, and I cast on like 140 stitches, and I figured, okay, I'll just do a cowl. So I cast on, and I started a two-by-two two rib, and I thought, I can do that in the movie. Well, yeah, I got home and I looked at it and there were so many mistakes. Sometimes I do really good at midi, move, ugh, movie knitting. Other times something goes horribly awry early on and that's what happened. And I was having trouble kind of focusing too because again, my head was just feeling sort of weird and the movie was happening and I couldn't really see what I was knitting and it was just not a great situation. So I did end up ripping it out. But in the meantime, I do now have my necessary needles for doing a hat in here and the yarn and there's a stitch marker down here somewhere too. Yeah, I did have a stitch marker with me. It's a cute little one from Simply Serving. I love her stitch markers. Isn't that adorable? It's a banana cat. I think I've shown this to you before. Anyway, so I will cast on a hat eventually. Um, probably not before I send these hats off to Sarah from um, Yarns at Yinhu, which I mentioned I think the last time I recorded. So that green and taupe hat is going to go to her. I have a bunch of other ones that I've done in the past. I need to find them. They're somewhere in my office. So once I find them, then I'm going to send a package off to her. And I'll just hold on to this one for, you know, the next time I have a charity to donate. Charity hats too. So that's sort of a work in progress that isn't quite a work in progress at this point, I guess. But I thought I'd tell you about it anyway because it was sort of a funny story. Don't leave home without your knitting needles if you're planning to start a project. That's what we learned there. And don't dump your chibi needles down into your car because you won't get them back. Um, let's move on. <laughs> spinning. I do have a little bit of spinning to talk about. And this is actually fleece spinning. So this is, you've seen this I think, this is a fleece I got um, a few months ago at a show I was vending. I got this fleece from Carlene, who is from the Prairie, is her farm. And this is from Bunny. The sheep's name is Bunny. She is three quarter BFL, one quarter Gotland, um, and she was a yearling, so it's a yearling fleece. And it's two pounds, five ounces. It's beautiful. Oh my gosh. The, there's so many colors in this fleece. Can you see that? Look at all of these beautiful colors. Anyway, this was what I've decided I'm going to work on in July for the unofficial Tour de Fleece spin-along that we're going to have in our group through the month of July. Um, 
the reason I chose this fleece is because Carleen had rinsed this fleece already and it feels very, very clean. It wasn't, she said she didn't scour it, she just rinsed it a couple of times. There is next to no veg matter in here. I don't know if she, um, if she coats her fleeces or not, or her sheep or not, but there is hardly any veg matter in this and it does not feel lanolin-y at all. So I'm not washing it. I'm just going to spin it as it is. But I wanted to decide how I was going to prep it first. So that's what I did this morning. Um, my three options are to either spin it right from the locks, because these are nice crimpy locks and they're beautiful, um, which means you would flip card them a little bit to open them up. And this is a flip carder. And you basically just kind of, how I do it anyway, you take the lock, here, I'll show you. Maybe if I can. So here's a lock. Look at this. Look how crimpy. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, so I basically, I just take it and kind of fluff it. Like, I usually do it on my lap, sort of, but I'm not really brushing it. I'm just sort of fluffing at it. And that opens up the lock. And then I do it from the other side, too. Da, 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 da. This is probably not the correct technique for doing this, but it's how I do it and it works. Um, and so you have a nice fluffy, mostly opened up lock. You know, you might have to open it up a little bit more. And then you can just spin right from the locks. So that was the first thing I tried. I'm basically sampling. I'm doing three different samples. So I flip carded and, okay, where did it go? Oh, here it is. <laughs> So here is my sample from that. I did a really little sample of that. Um, I spun the singles on my wheel. I'm, I'm using my wheel for all this. Um, I spun the single and then I three plied it. So I chain plied. And that is my plan no matter which way I end up. Okay, what in the world is going on here? This will not open up. Hang on. Problems, technical difficulty. Okay, there we go. So, um, I, I three-plied it and that's what this is. So, I, I would say this was a semi-woolen spun effort. Um, there were a couple places in the locks as I was spinning them that were tight and so I was sort of like smoothing them down as we went. Um, but for the most part, I was attempting to spin this woolen. And that is basically what I ended up with. And then I, again, three plied it. And I would say, now this has not been washed. And since I'm sure there is still a little bit of lanolin in it, it's going to fluff up um, when I do rinse it. I will do that before I decide my method of prepping this. Um, I just haven't had time. I just did these this morning. So the, anyway, this was the first one. So this was the flip carded um, spinning directly from the locks. Okay, I'm not even going to bother doing that. <laughs> so then the second one that I did, I combed. So these are my combs. <gasps> they are hazardous. You have to be careful. Um, I like combing though. I really enjoy that. And so I combed a bunch of locks. I am trying to keep the colors together though. I was picking through the fiber and picking similar colors to work with. And before I do all of it, I'm going to go through the whole fleece and separate it by color so that I can do that. Um, so I'll end up with a nice gradient at the end. Okay, so this is the result of the flip carding. Now when you, or not flip carding, I'm sorry, when I combed it. Um, and when you comb something that's basically you're aligning all the fibers um, and they're nice and straight and orderly. And then there's a couple different ways you can take the fiber off the combs. I ended up just kind of pulling it off um, and it came off, you know, it comes off sort of in a big continuous, well, it's top basically is what you're getting. Um, I have done it before where I've pulled it off and pulled it through a diz while I did it. A diz is like a, a disc that has holes, usually different size holes in it. Um, that just gives you like a nice consistent size roving. I can't find my Diz right now. It's somewhere in box packed land. Um, so I just pulled it off into a wonky piece of roving or top, sorry. And um, 
I spun that. And combing results in a worsted prep, and so you would worsted spin this, which is where you're basically keeping the fibers all in line and orderly, and you're kind of smoothing them down as you go. Um, and that's how I spun this. And I like it. This is actually my default spin. And it's a little bit thicker than the stuff I got from the flip carding. Well, no, it's not. It actually looks thinner, but again, I think it's going to plump up. Um, but I think it only looks thinner just because it's smoothed down more than the other stuff was from the flip carter. So that was the second prep. Um, okay, I have to sit these somewhere where I'm not going to kill myself on them later. Um, that was my second prep experiment. And then lastly, I used hand cards to card the fiber. Carding is a woolen prep because basically the fibers get all tangled up with themselves. I, I usually explain it to people like um, combing is just like it sounds. Like if you take a hair comb and you comb your hair when it's wet, it just aligns everything up, you know, or even when it's dry if you have straight hair. I have curly hair, so if I do that, it just turns into a mess. So I usually say, you know how if you have wet hair and you comb it, everything's all nice and lined up. That's the same thing you're doing when you're combing fiber. However, when you're using hand cards, this is much more akin to brushing, and it's really kind of akin to brushing naturally curly hair when it's dry, because it just goes all over the place. Not really, but it gets very fluffed up, and the, the fibers are all sort of entangled with each other in different ways. So that's a woolen prep, and so you would spin it, ideally you spin it woolen, which is where you're not smoothing those fibers as you're spinning it. Um, you're letting the twist enter the fiber and then you're pulling and just letting it enter the fiber and it's very airy and light. Um, so I did this. This fiber, I gotta say, did not like being carded. It, that was sort of a mess too, <laughs> the carding, um, which is why my cards look sort of messy at the moment. Um, and it, it didn't really... With this prep, it didn't really like being spun woolen either. I was trying, but I was having issues. Um, now, I will say, I have not used my hand cards in quite a while, so I know my technique was a little lacking today, but in general, um, it just didn't seem to work very well. But this is the yarn I got, and this is definitely a poofier yarn than what I got with either of the other samples. So that stands to reason, being wool and spun, that it is poofier. Because again, it's got all that air in it and makes it poofier. <laughs> uh, technical term. So at this point, just based on the prep experiences and the spinning experiences, I would say I'm leaning towards combing as my method of choice. Um, with flip carding being the second option. Um, I will not be hand carding these, this fiber. It just did not work well. I did not enjoy it. Um, there's nothing wrong with this yarn, but getting to it just didn't really make me happy. So I'm either going to comb it or I'm going to flip card it, or, you know, I could do some one way and some another way. You never know how I'll end up doing it. But that's my plan at this point. So that was my um, sampling <clears throat> experiment this morning. And now I feel like once I rinse the, or, you know, I'll soak them and see how the yarn looks and then make my final decision as to what I want to do with this fleece um, for July. I may start prepping the fiber before July and then start spinning it in July. Um, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, that's my spinning for this week. So that brings us to the cows, the alongs. Um, we're still in June, so we're still doing the everybody else's cow cow. Um, so please continue to post in that thread. I'm enjoying seeing everything you guys are doing for that one. I will draw two more prizes um, at the end of June. Well, once June is over. Um, let's see, today is the 22nd, so that's a little over a week. So if I record next week, we'll still be in the June Cal, so it won't be till the first week in July that I would end up drawing the prizes, but I will draw the prizes eventually. Anyway, um, then in July, we're doing the unofficial Tour de Fleece spin-along. So whether or not you're actually taking part in Tour de Fleece, um, it doesn't matter. You can just spin along with us, and you can spin along with us the entire month of July, not just during Tour de Fleece. We're just flouting all the rules this time. 
Um, but if you are joining in the official Tour de Fleece and you're on an official team or whatever, please also feel free to post in our group just so we can see what you're doing because that's always fun. Um, let's see, what else? New things. I actually have a ton of new things that I got at TNNA. Um, I did not bring in any to show you this week only because... There's so much, and I have stuff I need to go through yet. I haven't really finished going through things. Some of the things I got, I got specifically that I'm going to use for prizes for future alongs. Um, and the other things I'm going to keep. So I need to sort through that. But you will see all these things over the coming weeks, I'm sure, as I either start to use them or start to offer them as prizes. The way TNNA works, it's a trade show, so there are some booths that offer some cash and carry kind of stuff, um, but for the most part, that's not the point of the, the exhibitor's floor. That's just for people to see what they have so that they can connect with businesses who might want to do business with them. However, the one night of um, like Friday night, they do what's called the sample it room where you um, can go in and there's a selection of vendors in there that do have things specifically for cash and carry. And there, it's usually some of their newer items that they're trying to get word out about. So that's a really fun room to go in. You got to set yourself a budget. And I was really good. I stayed under my budget because <laughs> I took cash this time as opposed to last year. Um, and I did get a, real, a bunch of fun things. And then I got a couple things the next day too on the floor. I guess that was Thursday night, not Friday night. Yeah, Thursday night. Um, anyway, I did get a couple other things then the next day on the floor from some booths that had, you know, the cash and carry. But... Yeah, for the most part, it's not a shopping event, not like an actual fiber show or fiber festival or a market at a retreat or anything. That's not the point of the TNNA setup. But you still come away with stuff, so that's what's fun. <laughs> um, yeah, so I will show you stuff over the time. I just didn't bring it in because I already had all this other stuff here and I felt a little overwhelmed. Um, Let's see, as far as the summer of me, which kind of takes starts taking us into 10%, um, part way, part of it, um, let's see, I did finish my first weaving project, so that's part of my summer of me goals, was to start weaving. I started sampling a fleece, so I'm finally working on a fleece, although I feel like I'm kind of cheating since I'm not actually scouring it myself, <laughs> but I will eventually. Um... I have been taking downtime basically because this week I've had to. I just have not, like I said, I haven't felt great. You know, I'm not sick, but I'm not not well. I'm not well either. It's weird. It's, I don't even know how to describe it. Um, and then last night, my hubby and I went out to dinner, which was nice. It's always fun when we can just relax and um, yeah, it was a nice time together. So I guess that's really it. I have not gotten to go out. You know kayaking. I'm not sure if kayaking right now would be a great idea or not. I was talking to my husband about that last night. I said, you know, I kind of feel like if I got out there and I was on the water and you had the water motion as well as the potential for dizziness, I'm not sure that's a great pair. I mean, it could be fun because it would kind of be like driving and I would be in control of the motion and everything, but I would be the forward motion anyway. But it's that side to side and, you know, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not real sure I want to try that quite yet. We'll see. But I haven't had a chance to go hiking. I haven't had a chance to go back out on my bike yet. Um, oh, there's a blue jay out there. Um, anyway, yeah, I haven't, I did a ton of walking though when we were in Cleveland at TNNA. Because we were always walking back and forth to the hotel, to the convention center, and back and forth and finding food places so a lot of walking happened so I guess I was still active um, my kombucha I believe my um, starters the the scobies I think they're probably as grown as they're going to be in their stuff that the, the kombucha that I started them with so my next step now is to find jars that will be adequate for actually doing the fermenting um, they have to be jars that I believe have a tight lid because part of the fermenting process, it basically carbonates itself and gets under pressure. 
So I'm a little nervous about this. I know it'll be fine and I've read a lot about it and I've talked to some people who've done it so I think it'll be fine but I do have to find adequate vessels to do this in. Um, at least I think you put it under pressure for this part. You can do a secondary fermentation too after the first one where you can add like some fruit or some like syrup of fruit, so an extra to give it flavor. And then you also put it under pressure and that's when you have it in the jars though, like that you're gonna keep it in the bottles. And I do have a couple of bottles that have the swing top lids that clamp down really tight. Um, and then I have a couple of other bottles that just have, they're glass bottles, but they just have screw on tops. So I don't know, I, I'm, I'm hoping I do not end up spewing kombucha all over the kitchen when it ferments too much. <laughs> So stay tuned, but I am going to transfer my scobies into their new homes with the sweet tea stuff and turning it into actual kombucha. That's coming next. Okay, um, that's it for 90% and 10%, so let's move on to the shop news. First of all, I did record a really short little um, video slideshow, basically the other day um, showing a bunch of stuff that I put into the shop this week. Um, it's stuff I've pulled from my show inventory and I wanted to get the word out because I knew I wasn't going to be podcasting until later this week. So I did put that out. You probably saw it. I'm not sure how often I'll do those. That worked out pretty well actually um, to do that. It's just, like I said, it's a little slideshow. I set it to music. It was kind of fun to play with. Um, Obviously, I didn't get to show you absolutely everything in that video. Everything is up in the shop. A few things have already sold out, but there's still a lot in there. And I am going to show you some specific things in just a few minutes, but I just wanted to let you know right now that video is up there. I called it the highlights. Um, I can't remember what the full title was. Basically, it's the highlights of things that I put in the shop this week. Um, so you can watch that. It's seriously short. It's like a minute and a half long, so it's super easy to watch. Um, I'll, I will link to it in the show notes, or maybe I'll try to do that fancy little linky thing that you can put up here in the video. I've never done that before. We'll see. Boy, music in a video and a fancy linky thing. <laughs> Things are getting crazy. Anyway, um, I just wanted to let you know too that I did draw for the Needles Up Rhinebeck VIP tickets, so thank you to everybody who entered. The winners have been contacted and both know that they have won. Um, the winners were uh, Sleep Sleep Mom, who is Cindy from New York. And the other winner is, ironically, Sarah, who is PA Nitwit. And she was actually sitting next to me when I was doing the drawing. <laughs> I mean, she wasn't paying attention. She didn't know that's what I was doing, but I was sitting right next to her. And I said, Sarah, I'm not going to send you a message to let you know you won. I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> so she was the other winner. So congratulations, Cindy and Sarah. I can't wait to see you guys at Rhinebeck. Um, or at Needles Up the day before Rhinebeck, technically. So, um, I already told you pretty much about TNNA and that I am working on bringing some new things into the shop based on things that I saw there and people I talked to. Some of it will be sort of yarn adjacent things, which will be kind of new for me too. Um, to do things in this way. So I'll tell you all about that once they're ready to go. Um, I got a huge shipment of undyed fiber right before I left for TNNA. So I'm going to be working on dyeing up a lot more fiber for the shop. I know that's not something I put in the shop overly frequently, but I want to start putting more in. I have had some requests for fiber more often, so I'm going to start putting um, fiber into the shop more. And I also hope to be bringing in some um, interesting new fibers that you don't see a whole lot. Um, so stay tuned for that. I haven't made those arrangements quite yet, but I'm working on it. Um, what else? Uh, I told you about the highlights video, and as always, we have the the um, conversion and rewards program still going on. Um, I did go through all of the finished object posts in the conversions rewards program um, just to see where everybody's at and there are several people who have reached at least one 500 gram milestone who I've not heard from and that's fine if you're if you're taking part in this and you want to keep you know accruing those 500 gram increments 
before you talk to me because you want to get like a lot of one thing or something, that is absolutely fine. You, you don't have to cash them in now. You can wait till the very end of the year or like the very beginning of next year because obviously you have till December 31st to do this. Um, but you can, yeah, you can keep collecting them until you're ready to turn them in. But at some point I may just get in touch with you just to make sure you know that, you know, you're, will, you're welcome to cash them in. But basically if you want to cash in your rewards, you need to contact me because I'm not going through on a super regular basis to see if you've reached a milestone. Um, so yeah, check, check the rules out if you need a refresher on that and then contact me if you've reached the 500, um, the 500 mark. Okay, my camera is dying, so I'm gonna try to hurry this up for the last bit here. I'm gonna show you this stuff in no particular order, just sort of in the order I have it here. Um, but this is just a brief overview of some of um, the things that I did put in the shop this week. Again, there is that little mini video, the highlights video out there if you wanna watch that. You'll see even more things, but for right now, I'll just show you these, because some of these I don't think were in the highlights video. Um, I have self-striping. Let's do self-striping first. I've got all of these are you are mostly on more than one base. Some of them are only on one base, but for the most part, there's only like maybe one or two skeins of anything. Um, because again, this is stuff that I pulled out of my show inventory. So anyway, um, I've got some Don't Tell Him It's a Rainbow. I know I've got, the, this is on Traveler, but I know I also have it on my Squish 2.0 base. So that's in the shop. I have some of the original Pi Day, and then I also have one skein of um, the darker side of Pi. So these are the colorways that stripe according to the number sequence in Pi. Um, I have one skein of um, Once Upon a Stained Glass Window, which is an eight stripe colorway, and it's just got so many fun colors. The skein I have is on Bedazzled, so that's available yet. And then I have a few colorways that were basically show exclusives. Um, and what I do is, as I'm prepping for shows, I often just sort of get bored with doing all my same old colorways. Um, so I just make up new colorways as I go. <laughs> and I have a few of those, and I put some of those in the shop for you guys too. This one's called Girl Seeks Rain. This is one that I dyed in three different colors and then overwashed it um, with a pale gray. So it's got some depth to it like that. But there's that one. Um, then there is Citrus Grove, which is a really nice, bright, fun. It's got a, a darker orange stripe and then a lighter orange stripe. And then it's got this white stripe that has all these fun green and gold and um, tan speckles in. So there's that one. And then there's this one. This one I've actually dyed multiple times for shows because the first time I took it, it sold out. And I was like, wow, <laughs> like sometimes they hit it and people really love it. But this is called Hypothesis. Um, it has a soft black stripe and then it has a wisp stripe. And then in between is a white stripe that has like red and earthenware orange and gold speckles in it. So that's Hypothesis. And I have it on Traveler and I have it on Bedazzled, one skein each. So. That's been super popular at shows, so I definitely, I'm gonna dye more of that up and have it in the shop proper eventually. Um, okay, so that's some of the self-striping. There are definitely more colorways up there, um, but those are the ones I brought in to show you. I did put, a, actually I put all of my show fiber in the shop right now because Tour de Fleece is coming up and I wanted to give you guys some fiber if you wanted to work with my fiber. Um, so here's a couple of them. This is Never Not Color, which is on Polworth Silk. And this one is called What Sorcery, and it is on Mixed BFL. I love this color. I so much want to spin one of these myself, but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, anyway, so those are just two of them. There's several other colorways of fiber in the shop. Um, and then I have Xenolith kits. I put all of my Xenolith kits that I have left. Um, this is the Xenolith hat that Sarah um, P.A. Nitwit um, designed for my Traveler yarn last year. So this is my sample one. This is out of a bright set. I think there's one bright set left. Um, and then 
I, I just brought in a couple of the kits to show you because these are new color combos. Um, this one is the Sweet Pea color combination for Xenolith. And this one is New Spring. And any of the color kits that are in the shop, um, you pick the color kit and then you get to pick what um, main color you want. So you can pick plain vanilla, soft black, wisp, or... Um, oh, this blue. I'm sorry. I don't remember which blue that is. <laughs> That's horrible, right? I've got this blue in several different shades, and each one has a different color. But anyway, you'll see it in the listing. So you get to pick which one you want. Just put a note in with your order, um, or email me and let me know, and I will send you the color of your choice. Okay, moving on. Um, I have some variegateds. Now, I did something called Rare Gems um, at the beginning of the show season where I did a lot of small batches of non-repeatable colorways. And there's very few of them left, but what's left I did put up in the shop. Um, and this is one of them. Um, it's a red, purple, orange kind of colorway. I think there's one other one left that's like a red-orange. It's really cool. Um, it's a little less variegated. It's almost more tonal. But anyway... Um, these just these turned out really neat and I like doing things like that I like taking things to shows that I don't always have in the shop because they're things that are easier to buy I think sometimes when you can see them in person rather than just reading a description and seeing a picture But I also like to offer you guys some of these things too um, Then I have two new variegated colorways that I started dyeing this show season And I'm putting them in the shop now for the first time and these are repeatable um, this one was called Color Coming Out of Your Yin Yang, <laughs> and this is a Gilmore Girls reference. You might remember um, the season, I guess season four, when Rory first goes off to college, and Babette, the next door neighbor, not my cat, um, gives Lorelai a bag of bulbs so she can plant her bulbs and tend to her bulbs and then get flowers and they'll make her so happy, you know, and distract her from how much she misses Rory. And so Babette comes out when Rory and Lorelai are outside while Lorelai's planting her bulbs. And Babette, she's like, you come out one morning and pow, you have color coming out of your yin yang. And I just thought that was the funniest line ever. So anyway, this is color coming out of your yin yang. It's a really fun, bright, um, variegated with speckles in it and just a lot of fun so I've got this on several bases and then uh, this is the most recent one I, I just did and it's sort of timely because the 4th of July is coming up here in the United States so this is kind of a good sort of patriotic colorway I'm calling it American rust and if you read the listing you'll get the whole story behind it but basically I live in Pittsburgh which is got a huge industrial history um, you know it was a steel center for so many many years um, as our country or yeah basically as the country was growing the steel industry was huge here it's not so much anymore and if you drive anywhere in this area of uh, the state I mean you just see reminders and remnants of that industrial heritage um, you know shut down mills rusted mills there's coke ovens out our way um, just a lot of things and so I did a colorway sort of in homage to that part of our history both locally and as a nation um, so it's got this kind of dark duskier blue and then this rusty red and then there's a wisp area there's some of that light wisp gray and then it's all also speckled in there um, so it's sort of got the red white and blue vibe but on a much more muted tone um, so anyway American rust I really like this colorway so I put all of that that I have up in the shop right now too and lastly I have my fluff which I can't remember if I told you about this is um, mohair and silk, kid mohair and silk. I have very little of this left and I can't get any more from my supplier till July, like late July. So what's in the shop now is what I've got. I have these four colors left. So this green, this pomegranate, blue steel, or steel blue, sorry, and soft plum. And then I dyed up um, 
my remember my sunshine base I discontinued it a couple of years ago I've brought it back specifically to have it to pair with um, the mohair because it's a light fingering weight and it will pair up really really well there's 490 yards in this it's a light fingering 100% superwash merino it's a three ply and then um, these are 459 yards so it's very close in yardage but I dyed them up so that they coordinate but you can also mix and match them however you would like really I mean do what you want so but what I have in the shop right now is all I'm gonna have especially of the mohair for some time for several more weeks so grab it while you can <laughs> all right my camera is literally on its last little bit of energy so I need to go um, please watch the little video check out the shop and other than that if you have questions please you know feel free to PM me or email me um, there will be the episode thread in the 90% knitting group um, you can always leave comments on YouTube and I'll talk to you soon bye